the reason we are here today are these little beauties right here. In my effort to make the set, uh, the set look nice and neat and organized, give the appearance of nice and neat and organized as I go through tutorials and things like that, I have to show you different parts. But what I figured out is my coffee and my water often cause um, a lot of moisture on a desk. They sweat basically. And so I decided to make these fabric coasters so that I can control that. These are so, so simple. And I came up with this design. I love it because they are so elegant and they have these beautiful mitered corners. So if this is something that you're interested in, you've got time to get your supplies together and sew along with me. The supplies are listed in the description, but I will go over them again here, but you do have time to grab uh, your things. It's not a lot, it doesn't take a lot. It's very simple, easy project, very quick. Yeah, so get your things together. This is actually perfect for the upcycler, someone who has well, curtains that you wanna repurpose. Uh, yeah, curtains to coasters, uh, placemats to coasters. Yes, address to coasters. <laughs> or any old scraps that you may just have lying around the house would be perfect. As long as the, the fabric is absorbent and can be hand or machine wash would work. Okay. And it's nice and stable. Like quilters, cotton is great. Yeah. And broadcloth, twill, any kind of like cotton or cotton blend would be perfect for this. I'm using also gauze, like a, a double gauze. is also awesome for this as well. You know, and the other thing about this, this is also an adaptable thing that you can do to make, let's say for instance, I'm thinking about making a duvet cover for my bed with this similar design. I just love the simplicity of it. And um, this would be great even as a, a quilter, you could um, make a simple quilt out of something like this with miter corners. Yeah, so let's talk about the supplies you need. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So when these are all done, they will end up being five inch squares. And you can adapt them to whatever size that you want. But these will, that we're working on today will be five inch. This is a fairly large cup of coffee, right? So it fits really nicely, okay? And again, you want to get a fabric that doesn't have a lot of variation design in terms of like no embossing or anything like that because you want your cup to sit fairly flat on there and be very stable. So these work really, really well for that. Okay, so let's talk about your supplies. All right, so a set, I'm planning on doing a set of four. I've already done two of them. And so I'm going to make two more. Okay. So you'll need four squares that are seven and a quarter inch around. And you'll need four squares of a contrasting fabric, four and three fourths inch around. Okay. And your batting should be cut to the same size, four and three quarter inches around. Okay. And for your batting, I would recommend that it's fairly thin. I wouldn't go any thicker than maybe a quarter inch thick. Again, it's just to make sure that your cup is nice and stable when you're using it. Other things you will need is your ruler. I'm going to use a hem gauge as well, but it's not necessary. You'll need your scissors. You need something to mark with. I'm going to use a water-soluble pen because that's easiest to mark with. And I just got my thread snippers here because I tend to reach for them a lot. Okay, of course, you'll need your pens. Okay, I've got pens here. You'll need your pens, thread, and your sewing machine. Okay. So that's all you'll need. And let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is uh, measure and iron all of the pieces. Okay, that's what we want to work on first. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out. So what we're going to do is fold it and um, press it one inch, do a one inch hem basically around the perimeter. The important thing about this particular project is the measuring and the ironing. The ironing is a really, really important um, part so that your miters come out nice and clean. And I'm ironing it towards the uh, wrong side, okay? Um, if you have a fabric that doesn't really have the wrong side, then it doesn't matter, but um, you wanna create the hem so that um, you're ironing it towards the wrong side of the fabric. So these are actually perfect to put all around the house, like, you know, any room where you, <laughs> you drink, right? So I think this is a nice little addition. Um, and it, it's good to like, you know, especially if you want to add a splash of color somewhere in the house. Um, and I love these because they are washable and also because we're, we're recycling, right? So we are making um, old things into new things. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to now press it in from the edge, one quarter inch. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing that we're going to do after you have ironed your squares, we're going to mark, okay? And for this, I'm just gonna use a water-soluble pen um, because it's easy. You can use chalk as well. And so um, now what I'm going to do is mark two inches around the perimeter. So from each corner, I'm going to mark a two-inch mark. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna connect those marks with a diagonal line. Yeah, so once again, this is going to help to create that beautiful uh, perimeter that you see on um, this guy. All right, so that's where we're headed. I love it because it looks like a picture frame. All right, so we're done marking, as you can see here. So I've just marked little triangles. And as you can see, those um, the line intersects just above the corner where we um, pressed that one inch mark, okay? Okay, so now what we're going to do is pen, okay? So I'm going to take both of the ends of the line and match them, okay? So that's right sides together. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, and the lines are meeting on the other side, just like that. Okay, and so before I uh, pin this down, I'm just going to um, fold back the little quarter inch um, fold that we made. Okay, just fold it back. Okay, and so you can still see your line going down here. And when you're ready to stitch, just follow that line. You can, I can still kind of barely see it even with that folded back like that. All right, so I'm just gonna pin it. Okay, I'm just gonna pin all of them right sides together. I'm just using the unfolded, um, I'm just using the line at the edge um, to fold it properly. And then I can just um, fold back that little quarter inch um, to press line. Even muslin works really good with this, okay? So if you only have muslin hanging around, it's perfect. It really is more about a color pop. So that center fabric that we're going to use, maybe just um, you know, put a nice little color pop in the middle. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and pin them both. Okay, just like this. Lining them up and then folding it back. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is stitch along here, backstitching here and backstitching at the end where the line ends. Okay, so it's just a straight stitch on all corners following the line. Okay, so we've got all of those stitched. I'll go ahead and stitch the second one too. And so now that we have everything stitched, we're simply going to trim. Okay. So we're just going to trim close to the stitching here. Okay, so now we have trimmed all of our on corners. Okay, they look like this. And now what I'm going to do is turn it right side out. Okay. Using my uh, fingernail, I'm going to try to get as close to the point as possible and then just flip it out okay. on all sides. Okay, very good. Look at that. Already got your miter corners. Look at that. Okay, looks like a picture frame. Okay. So all right, so now we are ready for our. Um, contrasting fabrics. Okay, so what we're going to do is take one of your um, contrasting fabric squares and you're going to back it with one of your um, batting squares. Right, so mine is really thin. It's, a, it's truly about, it's, it's just shy of a quarter of an inch. Okay, so um, I'm putting this to the wrong side of the fabric. Okay wrong side of the fabric here, and then I'm just going to stuff it like so. These come out to be five inch, so it goes down from seven and a quarter inches to five inches. And then this inside square is just shy of five inches. It's, it's four and three quarters inch so that you have a little room at the corners to kind of debulk. It kind of keeps it from getting too bulky. Okay, so that's one. And we'll go ahead and stuff the second one. Okay, so I put my batting on the back of it and I'm just going to stuff it. Looking gorgeous already. Okay, so now what we're going to do is pin this in place. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay, now I've got this all pinned. Okay, so what we're going to do then is edge stitch along the edge of the outer trim here. Okay, I'm gonna edge stitch along here. And I'm gonna increase my stitch length since we're top stitching here. Okay. And for those of you who are new to sewing, you wanna back stitch at the beginning and the end. Get to the corners, just get it.
So I'm gonna give this a quick press. And here, the fabrics that I'm using is like I said, a double gauze. And this is like a really light uh, weight, like broadcloth. Okay, and now I've got a highly absorbent, beautiful way to keep my desk nice and dry. So a very quick and easy project that you can do like really it, 20 minutes to be quite honest with you. I just love how it fits my coffee mug. My coffee was getting cold. Look how beautiful that is. I love it. These actually make amazing gifts for like holiday sewing. Um, yeah, birthdays, Mother's Day sort of gifts, things like that. I love these. I love that has a nice touch. And then if you made it, of course, it makes it even more special. I would love to see you for next episode. Please join me. But the only way to do that is how? Like and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss a single thing. Okay. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. Change it to all so that you are notified when I upload. Please don't forget to create something beautiful. I'm out.